everybody. Welcome to Trader Merlin Show. It is your Thursday edition. Another exciting Thursday. It's crazy that we've had in four trading, well, three trading sessions, a rate, almost a 9% move in the S&P 500. Absolutely unbelievable, especially given what's going on with the stalemate gridlock uh, that we got going on with our election. Still no clear winner out there. We'll have to wait another day. Uh, hello, everybody. Hello, Izzy, Big Eb, Daniel, Dana, Koja, Terry, Tom, Valerie. Good to have you live with us uh, today. Jeff, Thomasina, Not Bad Whiskey. And I've got a bunch of questions from you guys that I'll get to later on. They're not Forex related. We're going to talk about Forex though on the show. Today we've got uh, a gentleman who's worked for my Trading Academy. He's got a ton of great free content out there on a daily basis. I encourage you to check it out. Hailing from the great state of Texas, which by the way, almost voted blue in this election. We've mm -hmm. got none other than Walker, Texas trader. What's up, Walker? How you doing? Howdy, Merlin. Glad to be back. Glad to be on the show. Glad to have you with us. And it's funny because I follow what you do, and there's a lot of different stuff out there that you are working on. Uh, we'll talk about your webinar that you did yesterday. Once we get through all of the the markets, the overview of stuff, uh, we know that the U.S. dollar has just been doing absolutely crazy lately, uh, and that's not a, a good thing. It's actually been tanking, which uh, you know has, has been great for some of these currency pairs out there. Let me real quick show you guys uh, where you might want to get more information on Walker. That is going to be here. Facebook is the way to get in touch with them, guys. It's the Walker Texas Trader. So if you go to Facebook, just add him there. Be part of the group. That's right. He says he gets your get you a mug out there too. If we this nice. Uh, by the way, I gotta let you know. Uh, Walker sent me this mug. And it looks like a standard coffee mug. This thing holds 16 ounces. So you could you know, have a full beer in here. Walker says maybe with some bourbon, but maybe a full beer in here and no one would ever know. Be like, oh, this coffee is really saucy today. All right, Walker, let's uh, let's dive into um, into the markets. I want to talk about uh, US dollar. Obviously, that's one of the, the major ones out there. It's been just, just having a, a really tough go of it recently. I'll, I'll start there and let you dive into what your thoughts are on the US dollar. Sure. And first, I have to say, Forex traders never mess around with their coffee. I've always got a mug, but it's been worth it. If you've been watching the dollar over the last 48 hours, it's been an absolute barn burner. Mm -hmm. It's almost kind of funny because the election has taken such a big highlight. People almost forgot that there was a Federal Reserve announcement right, today. today. Yeah. And the dollar has really been on the, the back foot, trending down. We've seen the euro dollar pop back over 118. So we're really starting to see some strong trends develop over the last week. Uh, I've got the US, uh, the dollar index up here, so the Dixie for all the viewers out at home. And, and obviously you guys can see that it's had some, uh, a little bit of tumultuous activity on November 2nd and 3rd because of the election. And then really from the morning of the 4th through right now, it has just been tanking and tanking aggressively. Now on that daily chart there, you know, we do have the dollar coming into, and you could argue that's an area of demand. What's your, your prognosis here? I did not listen to the Fed announcement or the FOMC meeting after. Uh, anything that was taken from that which you think might add further pressure to downside on the dollar? Long story short, the Fed said that stimulus is working, okay, and they made no hint of, of letting off the throttle. And this is where more of the same gives you more of the same. And I know that sounds funny, but it, it really correlates well with the big stock market rally because it appears that, hey, the easy money may be coming back. So that means weaker dollar and a propped up stock market, at least temporarily. Stimulus is working. Keep doing it. It almost sounds like uh, like a drug dealer saying, "Hey, man, I'm really high. Keep getting me more drugs so I can stay high." <laughs> well, that that's kind of the funny thing about the election too. I don't think the market really cares who the dealer is, whether yeah. it's a, a Biden dealer or a Trump dealer. As long as it gets its fix, we could see the again that strong dollar downtrend continue, and that could be paired with a strong stock market rally. Now, uh, one of the things I could do is just grab the chart real quick. Sure. And sure. I'll show you exactly what I'm looking at on the dollar index here. The dollar index, you're right, on the daily chart has been trending lower over the last three days. Mm -hmm. And here's the key point of support that we're watching right near 92.50, okay? For me, again, I'm not gonna negate that this is a strong down move, but one thing we have to consider is that prices may be trading in what I like to call an ascending channel. Mm -hmm. And I'm just doing some uh, quick trend line analysis here. Guys, 
it's not game over for the buck, at least not yet. Mm -hmm. And this is where the next 24 hours is going to be big for the dollar. In my personal opinion, again, any presidential news or even the NFP report tomorrow could send this out into a breakout and turn this ascending channel into a bear flag really quickly. Mm -hmm. However, again, if uh, the dollar gets tied up, if we see some more contention for the presidential election, if we have just a gangbusters NFP number, yeah, we could have a quick spike back up and it could be 95 all over again. Yeah, I, and I like that you, you you're, you're talking about kind of the the descending flag formation almost, you know, because you have, you have a bullish flag, you have a bearish flag formation, but that long sell-off that led into this kind of chop sideways, you know, you could view that as the pole. What happens if we get down below, you know, you, you got kind of 91.75 mapped out there as your low from September 1st. Yeah, there's your flag formation, and you could probably even go up higher. I mean, it, it really, since those March lows, this dollar has just been tanking, uh, making it much more aggressive if I look at it on a weekly. You know, what's your thought about that, you know, 71 or 91, 75 marks to me, which seems to be that low point there. I, I just feel like if we get below that, then your next stop and probably very aggressively is going to be down to that 90 mark. And it, it, I mean, that's a pretty bad piece for the U.S. dollar if it drops that quickly. Yes, absolutely. That's the, the darkest time horizon for the dollar, Merlin. Mm -hmm. And for me with these pricing patterns, I, I'm typically pretty conservative and I like to start off conservative trail a stop if it's going in my favor but for me again if we just take our, our flagpole here and extend it down I'm actually projecting towards 88 and change 8875 or better and if we go back and we put this out on the weekly or the monthly you can see this puts us right here at that 2018 low yeah. which again has been a, a big area for rallies you see demand come back for the buck so that, that really starts to, to take shape with a, a bearish breakout on the dollar. Yeah, um, decent picture here. And I think, uh, you know, we're seeing some comments from chat. Uh, Brandon says, you know, spike in USD equals a buying opportunity in assets. Well, the spike down is actually what's causing, not causing, but I think is what is one of the one of the factors why we're seeing these equity markets just go gangbusters, right? This, this generally will mean if the dollar is weaker, more foreign investment can come pouring into the equity markets. And, and that's probably the assumption, not just equity markets, but US products and services. And, you know, to see that sharp of a drop in just a, a few few days on the dollar index uh, for those that might not understand how currencies work you know this is devaluing the instrument that we measure everything with and in the period of four days it's dropped two percent and that may not seem like a lot but when the value of almost every goods and service drops by two percent in just four days that is going to have a big impact on the economy and I think it's uh, it's important to understand the impact of dollar uh, on on all markets including the, just the spot Forex markets Absolutely. And all you have to do to, to get these correlations, pull up any equities chart. This is actually uh, the e-mini for the NASDAQ. And I think the uh, tail of the tape is the large outsized blue bar <laughs> that we see to the top side. Yeah. Now, we're definitely getting close to uh, those all-time highs again. And a lot of this is going to be news driven. But for now, it, it's undebatable that we've got this engulfing candle. The market wants to rally. But again, just one headline could could snap it quickly back to reality. Yeah, and you know, it's it's not just a headline. I mean, right now we have a lot of contention going on. We've got, you know, jawing back and forth from both political parties, so not to make it a, a political thing, but, you know, it's, it's so close that uh, there will be legal stuff going on for quite some time, and who knows when that's going to remedy it. So, you know, as we see these huge moves up in the equity markets, you know, I'd be prepared just as easily to have some real quick moves down based off that indecision and, and uncertainty in the marketplace. So, um, all right, so you you jumped already so you we were talking dollar you've already moved to the euro jpy okay so you're saying let's just get away from the dollar now right what do we look at here with the euro jpy well what's interesting with the euro yen is that the yen is another safety currency and typically there's a correlation between the stock market and the yen the reason why i like this chart is because the correlation has completely broken down in the last two days Typically when markets rise, you see our yen pairs rise as well. So this is still telling me that there's a little risk looming out there in the markets. And the reason why I bring this up is for all the bears out there, 
Uh, if you're just getting burned or torched by, by the market going up, watch these yen pairs, okay? The reason being is the yen is, again, still trending to the downside. Yen is increasing in value, but this could be the, the canary in the coal mine if the stock market starts to crack. Mm -hmm. Again, we have one of these nice ascending channels that could lead us back into another bearish flag. And this would be uh, very bearish for stock markets in general if we break down. Again, just uh, take our pull here and extrapolate down to about 120.50 on the Euro Yen if we have that bearish breakout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, bring it on. Hey, honestly, I look at these and I just say, it, it, while it's, it may look negative and gloomy, it just reeks of opportunity either way. So I, I do sure. think um, I, I do think that this whipsaw, this neck breaker type of moves we're having in the past few days uh, will continue until we get some clarity and everybody just calm down with regards to the presidency. So hey, bottom line is it's creating some fun out there. Let's um, let's look at some of those dollar pairs. Um, I had EURJPY over here. Let's go to um, the Aussie dollar was an interesting one. I saw Aussie today break through some highs we saw from early October and just just about to hit this supply level um, on the daily chart for AUDUSD. What's your take on the Aussie at this point? Still, uh, are you bullish? I think the, a couple of guests we've had have been somewhat bearish based off this current downtrend, but it seems like we've broken that to the upside. Yes, and we have prices breaking out from this descending trend line. But what's interesting with the dollar pairs, okay, is that we've had quite a bit of sentiment in the market that's dollar positive, okay? And if we look at pairs like the Aussie dollar, Euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar CAD, on the retail level, nearly, oh, I'd say three to four to one long the dollar which means dollar pairs like Aussie dollar, Euro dollar, and pound dollar are, are getting quite the run. Mm -hmm. Now, does it remain bullish? This is the big question that everybody wants to hear. And for me, yes, with today's breakout, you've got to consider the next level of resistance right above 73.45. So while I don't like just hopping in, covering my ears, covering my eyes and buying, I think you've got to take dips as buying opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. And the area that sticks out to me is this nice four hour zone right up against the previous trend line. And oftentimes when we get these big breaks where you move so far so fast, we kind of get that snap back effect. Mm -hmm. And it's going to get tempting for me right near uh, 72 flat all the way down to uh, 71.50 for potential buying opportunities on the LC dollar. I like it. I like it. I, I like it. I actually still like it as a potential short coming up here. You know, I think we're coming right into some levels that, um, you know, you're you're real close. To me, you know, if you get just above that 73 mark is a little spot there that I'd be interested in uh, from a shorting perspective. But yeah, it's funny how it, the everything changes when you switch it over to like uh, the weekly time frame, right? It looks so small compared to the big moves we've had over the past few years. Well, we're definitely in the the kill zone. If you're if you want to take a reversal, this would be the the place to do it, and it could very quickly become a downtrend. All it takes is one big bar and and a lower low. And with so much headline risk, you, you can't discount anything. And my suggestion, if you're trading these dollar pairs, lots of activity, but keep your risk tight and and certainly manage all of these swing highs and swing lows accordingly. You know, the one that we, we watched this dollar change recently, and not not recently, it certainly had some nice chop, but if you look mm -hmm. at, um, you know, something like the USD JPY, obviously that's the safe haven trade, and we've been looking at this certainly since April. We had the initial bounce off the March lows for USD JPY, and, and it's just been drifting lower and lower and lower. It, it hasn't done anything impressive here with regards to, you know, uh, a, a ballistic move. It's just been slowly trending down. To me, it looks like this is another case, uh, like you just mentioned, of, you know, short those rallies. So if we do get some rally in USD JPY, um, you know, maybe it's that 104.50 mark or 105.50 or even the 106. But, you know, are you, are you bearish on the USD JPY as I am? I'm, I'm definitely bearish, I'm with you on that one, but I'm always cautious on this pair because we're getting to those Bank of Japan levels. <laughs> uh, you've always gotta mind the Bank of Japan. You can see the uh, wicks on the weekly chart here. 
and right between 102 and 104, all it takes is one headline from the BOJ to, to snap it back up to 108. So yes, mm -hmm. the, the intermediate trend is definitely down. This is something that uh, I would definitely reduce position size on just because of the outside risk or um, a potential risk of the Bank of Japan intervening near these levels. <laughs> They get to intervene again. It's negative 0.1. It has been negative 0.1% forever for those guys. I can't see that change anytime soon. Well, it, it's not necessarily the, the interest rates. It comes back to, to asset purchases mm -hmm. and what they're willing to do in regards to, to selling yen and, and buying dollars. This is preferably why on a breakout I prefer the euro yen because the open market operations for the BOJ are, are typically revolved around the dollar yen rate. So there is higher risk uh, here than compared to the sister currencies, the pound yen and the euro yen. All right. Um, are there any in the dollar, in the dollar, the majors? Because I, obviously right now the dollar is the talk du jour. Is there any one that stands out more than another? I know we looked at the uh, US, we looked at the yen, we looked at the uh, Aussie. I mean, I don't know if you follow uh, Canadian, Euro, British pound, anything in there that's maybe noteworthy? Well, for me, there, there's two currencies you've got to keep an eye on going into the next few months. Uh, of course, if the dollar's on the back foot, the euro is the, the play that I'm looking for. And that just comes back to year-end seasonality, the, the quote-unquote Santa Claus rally that we have in the euro in November and December. And for me, it seems like Santa's already leaving presents at the door for, for those that yeah. are watching the euro USD to the top side. So uh, again, if, if you had to twist my arm and say uh, a currency to watch on the dollar into the next month, you've got to look at the euro dollar. I do want to see a breakout over the high at 1860. And this looks like we're actually creating an ascending wedge of, short, of sorts on the hourly. Mm -hmm. So going into NFP tomorrow, this becomes critical. If we get a breakout over 1860, Again, uh, all bets are off to the top side, and you can take these projections and extensions on a, a bigger breakout over this 1860, 1875. That's gonna put us out uh, probably around 19 to 1920, followed by a move up to the yearly high of 120 or better. All right, uh, so seeing some strength in that Euro. Um, how does the, the Brexit factor into this for you? I know right now, you know, we're looking at a situation where Boris Johnson and his team are getting a little bit close. Obviously, December 31st is that time where they're officially out of the European Union. We haven't seen anything really ratified or solidified with regard to uh, tariffs and, and trade and things like that. How does that factor into trading something like the euro? I mean, I have the euro USD up here on my screen real quick for the viewers. You'll notice that if I were to drag this over a little bit and at the bottom, December's you know right about where my cursor is. This is going to be the new year, and something needs to be done by then. So to me, that is a real challenging piece and adds a little element of risk for certainly the British pound. Uh, euro might be a little more stable, but how does that factor into your trading? I'll, I'll be brutally honest and, and level with you, Merlin. Brexit's been going on for yeah. what, uh, three, four years now? For yeah, me, now. I, I don't even think about it. Until there's a major headline, right? Uh, kind of like the election that happened back in 2016. Until we get that headline and the market gets shocked in a specific direction, you've got to assume that it's more of the same. And again, it's not that it's not important, it's not that it can't affect the market, but for me, it's just an out of sight, out of mind. There's been deadlines before. I, mm -hmm. I think they're just going to kick the can down the road, and and that's what uh, history has shown us so far over the last few years. <laughs> yeah, curious. I was just curious. You know, I'm I'm one that when I know that there's something major coming up, it's certainly one of those major risk uh, events. I'm going to you know generally shy away from it just because I don't want to be juggling chainsaws when the wind's blowing because I could lose an arm. Um, and and that's one of those ones that we know is getting closer and closer to the finish line, kind of like the election. And I'll be honest, this uh, this last since the Tuesday election, I would if you gave me a million bucks, I would have not said it was going to move eight percent in just three days. Pretty amazing. Yeah, absolutely wild. No, I agree. Be prepared for anything. Uh, we we know back in 2016 that all the polls were again wrong, and we had this nice 2,000 pip weekly bar on on the pound dollar. So yes, uh, definitely caution is warranted on our our pound pairs, but 
as far as anything getting done, I'm I'm never optimistic that, that High Street's going to get their act together. <laughs> Name any government entity that we are optimistic that they're going to get their crap together. <laughs> I mean, we're we're in the midst of one of the biggest circuses in the world right now. It's it's funny. I got I you know I lived internationally for several years, and I'm getting my text messages and WhatsApp from so many European friends, and they're just like going off on me about certain individuals and in our political uh, you know and our political selection that we have to choose from and I'm like hey I didn't put any of these guys on the ballot and yeah I agree it's horrible for us so stop making fun of us we'll get past it eventually <laughs> no I'm right there with you um, let's see there were some questions coming in through are you a hundred percent Forex you trade futures as well I, I dabble in a little bit of everything. Okay. Forex is my my day to day. So again, I wake up in the morning, I go to sleep, I eat and breathe foreign exchange. I do dabble in futures, but it's mostly seasonable plays and uh, energy and ag products. Nice. All right. Well, uh, Adam, I'll get to your question a little bit later on about the the, the index kind of lining up here. Um, Jorge, I'm not sure if I understand your question. Says Merlin and Mr. Walker, is there a moment in time when we can buy at actual price? I'm not sure what that actually means. Um, if I think well, let's the price see. will go. At, as far as actual price is concerned, most traders on the retail level are trading spot forex, and just by the name spot, you are you are trading the cash market. So when you trade with, um, I don't know, one of the major US brokers, when you hit buy or sell, your order is being transferred through to a bank and you are actually buying and selling the spot rate or cash market. Uh, my suggestion is just go out there, compare banking rates to what you're seeing on the platform and you will see that you are actually buying or selling at the current value or current market price. Mm -hmm. All right, um, Brandon, do you think that the government can pay their debt? Of course they can pay their debt because they just keep on printing money. And of course, that's the situation that we are in, printing more and more money, devaluing our currency more and more, which goes full circle and kind of spirals down to, you know, do we do we end up losing faith in that fiat system and, and ultimately move away from the dollar? And hey, you know what? Maybe we'll get to the Amero someday. <laughs> oh, I haven't heard that one in a long time. It's been a couple of years to the Amero talk, huh? Isn't there a uh, Amero crypto coin? There is a there was an Amero there was an Amero coin oh. going around for a while, and it's funny because uh, some people were actually holding that. And like, look, I have an Amero. I was like, guys, no, it's like me holding a metal Bitcoin. I actually have a jar of, of cryptocurrencies. I don't know where that jar went uh, of of the coins of cryptocurrencies. And when back in two thousand and God, I think it was two thousand fourteen when I started getting in. I had a metal Bitcoin and I was handing it to people saying, hey guys, here's some Bitcoin. And they're like, oh, it's $200? Yeah, I'll, I'll buy one of those. Like, it's a joke. There's no physical Bitcoin here. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, you, okay, so for those of you who want to know, go to uh, his Facebook page. I would encourage you to check that out. I'll bring it back up here real quick just so you guys can check it. That's his, the way to stay in touch with Walker. It is the Texas Trader is his group. Uh, you obviously have to ask for permission to go into the group. And yeah, he's got the same logo on the cup as well. Um, but he's he's got a bunch of stuff in there, and there's media. If you go into media, he does all kinds of charts. He also has done a bunch of webinars. And I want to real quickly, since someone asked me about this the other day, I don't use Renko charts. But I know that you just did a webinar last night on Renko charts. So from a high-level perspective, tell me a little bit about Renko charts and maybe why are they important for uh, traders or maybe even just Forex traders. Sure. Absolutely, and this is a fantastic question. I'll just grab the, the screen back real quick yeah, and, and show you a, a sample Renko chart. Renko charts simplify the analysis process in Forex because they take all the whip out of the market. Now, what do I mean by that? Renko charts are based on price only and not time. And more often than not, due to the 24-hour nature of the markets, you see all the wicks just as dealers and traders around the world try to get liquidity. So when you take all the time aspect out, you can get these clear cut trends where you can see prices progressing and retracing in singular locations. And last night we were actually watching the Euro dollar rally and each one of these individual bricks is on five pips. So every five pips you print a new brick. And the idea being is you wait for the retracement and then you take advantage of the continuation. So it's helpful to also know when the trends are ending, when you see the consolidation or change in color, you can quickly assess that the trend is moving, you need to lock in profits or even bump your stops. So it's more of a, a visual aid 
And if I just flip back and forth to a candle chart, you can see the difference, right? Yeah. Which one's more easy to read? Here you've got a lot of whip, you've got some long wicks. If I go to the Rinko bars, you can actually see that this was a, a quite smooth trend going into this morning session. Hmm. Now we're seeing the consolidation. You can even use your Rinko bricks for pricing patterns and breakouts. And here would be the ascending triangle that we just talked about. So I would wait for a brick to actually cross and close, signifying that we have a breakout. So by design, it's just to smooth out the process of all the nasty wicks in the Forex market. You know, it's kind of funny for me. I look at these said, which one's easier to read? 100% the normal chart is easier for me to read. But it, the interesting part about that is it is, it's just because I've looked at millions and millions of price charts. So I look at that Renko chart, and I'm like, ah, I don't know, I can't see the emotion. Yes, you can see clearly the trends. I can see price moving up, that's clear. Um, but you know, when I'm looking at supply and demand zones, you know, I don't know if this, that area, yeah, right where you've got your black uh, diagonal line, right there, yep. I don't know if that area came down into an area of demand on the, the rally up, right? So for me, I'm, I feel like I'm missing a little bit with these charts, and that's probably why I've never used them in the past, but hey, to each their own. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I, I want you to think of them kind of like uh, blinders at, at a horse track, okay? Uh, again, no chart is perfect. Nothing is going to give you all of the information, but this is designed to keep you on the trend. And for all the traders out there, I, I know you've had at least one trade where you say, wow, I got out of that trend way too early. This keeps you down the track and going and not to psych yourself out until you actually get something tangible that says, yes, the market is retracing, we're printing a red brick down, okay, now I can take defensive measures. So it helps for that as well. Nice, all right, well, thanks for that one. I know you did it, you did like an, it was like an hour long webinar, right? Yes, it was, and uh, we got a really nice entry here on this red brick example, and uh, proof was in the P&L, right? Yeah, <laughs> no pudding, just the P&L. Uh, Tom says, understanding Renko is and was in my bucket list. Tom, he, just check out his uh, his webinar. I'm sure it will help you significantly in understanding how to use mm -hmm. Renko charts. Uh, I have not watched it yet. I saw I just saw it pop up on the timeline that you were doing it, so I will probably check that one out as well. Um, and then I'm just going to one-up you and do a better webinar. So that's how I <laughs> <laughs> You know the industry is. We just steal stuff. No, I'm just kidding. Hey, competition is good. Bring it on. That's right. No, it's teamwork in our in our case. Absolutely. Um, Jerry says, Wix equals human emotion, especially in the Forex market. Yes. And I think that for me, that's important. I like to see that emotion. But I think what Walker, to Walker's point is, to remove some of that stuff, it might make it easier for people starting out to read what's going on in the price charts. I, I like the dirty little details that I see on all the, the wicks and candle formations and how they structure to me. That's that's my favorite. Um, all right. What else do you go? I know you do a webinar like once a week or something. You seem like you're really active in creating content out there. What's your next one, you know? Well, tomorrow I've got a live NFP event at 8.15 Eastern. So we'll be covering NFP Live on the Facebook group channel. What we'll do is watch the event and I'll walk you through the, the market's biggest moves post NFP. So that's the big one coming up. Non-farm payrolls, for those who want to know what the NFP was. They're like, neuro-linguistic programming, that sounds weird. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, now, not uh, NLP, NFP, not NFP. Uh, what's your you? Because you have a pretty active community. I know you have a newsletter that you put out uh, regularly. You also are doing different webinars. Are you doing any teaching? Absolutely. Right now, I'm holding one-on-one -on -one consultations with traders. So, if you want to work with me individually, again, you can uh, schedule a consultation through the group, and I'm happy to meet with everybody. That's half of the fun of my day is to to get to meet the individuals in the community. Nice. Uh, Walker, is there anything else in the Forex world that you know we haven't covered that might be of interest to our viewers? Anything out there? You just go, wow, this it's kind of something maybe popped on your radar you think might be noteworthy that we haven't cussed, uh, discussed? Well, for me, it, it's going to be the, the pound pairs, okay? And I know we brushed over the Brexit, and or at least I did. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you've got to be aware of the, the volatility risk coming up in the pound. And I'll, I'll take you the screen one more time. Sure, do it. The uh, pound CAD is, is definitely one worth noting because traditionally speaking, the Canadian dollar gets weak around December. And if we have any modicum of pound strength from this Brexit deal, th this is, for me is the currency to watch. And right now we're just starting to break out through this key level, okay? 
So I want to see, again, going into the weekend, preferably a strong break uh, breakout over 71.75. And that opens us up for, for all sorts of fun stuff. If you just back it out to a higher time frame, there's a lot of free air on this chart. Mm -hmm. And prices are slowly printing those higher lows and higher highs. So I'm looking for a, a firm breakout, Dan, and really a move back towards the 74.25 level or better. And that's good for about uh, 250 pips. All right, there you go. One, that's another one I don't usually look at. Most, it doesn't know me, I don't usually trade cross pairs, but I uh, will be keeping, I wrote, made a little notes to myself to check out that GBP CAD and keep an eye on that one. All right, Walker. Well, uh, well, thank you for coming on today, my friend. I know it. Uh, we, we, I've been trying to get you on for some time. Again, thank you so much for the the Walker Texas Trader mug out there. I know I've got a. Yes. I need a twelve pack cooler for this though. You got. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the, the mugs are in, in limited quantities, so get them while they're hot. I'll have to come up with a, a new 2021 edition. There you go. I like it. Um, but the, the 2020 edition will probably just be like a shot glass because that's pretty much what we need now is the shot glass. <laughs> the coffee mug will save for 2021. All right, my friend. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate you sharing your time and effort and all the education that you do. So uh, hopefully I'll see you again on here soon. My pleasure, Merlin. All thank right, you. Care. Guys, that was Walker Anglin called the Walker Texas Trader. You can get yourself a mug, Ooh. Supply Limited. Go to his Facebook page. I had that page up there just a second ago, but let me switch over screens here if I can find my damn cursor because it seems to be hiding from me. Here is the Walker Texas Trader Facebook page. I would just go check it out. Adam is a group. Um, you know, just invite. He's got all kinds of great content out there, and you guys know a lot of people are charging for content. Some are free, but you know, there's great stuff out there, and as you guys can see, uh, Walker is a pretty knowledgeable guy about the Forex world. All right, let me go to some listener questions here. I have a few I want to get to, and I will start off with this one. Since Bitcoin is a topic du jour, I saw a lot of interest from you guys talking about Bitcoin. As you know, I am still uh, very, very bullish on Bitcoin. If you didn't see what happened today, it was one of those ones you just go, thank God for Bitcoin because my other equity trading has been getting beat up pretty badly. Uh, Bitcoin's been saving me. We broke 15,000. My guess is you will see that thing continue to rally. As you saw from the webinar I did probably, what, four or five months ago, Bitcoin will be at $100,000 by 2023. I know it seems crazy. Some of you are naysayers and say it's going to go away. You have to understand you cannot take it away. It is a systemic piece of now the internet. As long as the internet is there, Bitcoin will be there. You will not be able to shut it down. Now, that said, it's based off a program called SHA-256, which is the code behind it. And we won't get too nerdy out here, but basically your odds of finding out the right password to get into a Bitcoin address, the private key, would be like finding a grain of sand if the entire earth was covered in like 200 feet of sand. Good luck finding that one grain. You're not gonna crack it. Now, if they did, I agree with some people in here, Bitcoin would be zero within 20 seconds. I mean, everyone would be unload everything they possibly could at Bitcoin, but the odds of that happening are so colossally small, it will, it could never, we'll just say it will never happen. Now. Um, the other part of it is this. Uh, let, me, let me read the question here from Mario, and then I'll go more into Bitcoin because Bitcoin is, is very interesting. Uh, Mario says, how do you add your Bitcoin position, especially after another jump in price like today? I've started buying, but since then, it has just climbed. I have to leave a dramatic pause there. I've started buying, but since then, it's just climbed. Mario, be very happy about this. It's moving in your favor. You're making money. Um, I guess you're saying just basically, when do I buy back in, right? I want to buy more, but do I wait for the bigger pullbacks or just buy on any down day as is more of a long-term play? This is where the HODL term comes in. I, I used to buy a bunch of it and use that to buy um, different cryptocurrencies. Now I've stopped and I just keep my Bitcoin. So for me, it's a buy and hold piece. I think for the longer term people out there, when you see maybe Bitcoin sell off a little bit and you're like, I'm, I'm interested in holding this long term, then just buy some on the pullbacks. I, I would not be buying right now for the viewers that are at home. Let me show you Bitcoin's chart today. Uh, let's go at BTC. And you guys will see this gigantic, I mean, look at this chart. This is, oh, you don't want to talk about gorgeous. You know, the equity markets are up significantly. However, Bitcoin, if you go all the way back into the March lows, which was March 13th, Bitcoin hit a low of 5,000. It's at 15,400 today. Um, today was a huge move, an 8% move to the upside of 1,200 points. 
or $1,200. Well, I'll make this to a weekly so you can see a little bit longer term perspective. You guys can see that we're coming into those peaks from April and May of 2000, in, or June, excuse me, of 2019. After that, you've got a, a almost blue sky, right? There to me is a lot of potential for a move to the upside here. So um, I would not be buying Bitcoin right now. Um, I think it's maybe a little extended here. But you know, certainly any pullback would be, pro if you're thinking long-term as I am, then I would say go for it. So um, that's my stance on Bitcoin. Now, the other part here was certain individuals were saying that it's gonna kind of go away. Let me just throw something out at you, which I think is interesting. If you look at Binance, um, Binance is very quickly becoming a massive financial exchange. And what will probably happen in the next few years is exchanges like, I hate to say it, New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, or any exchange where things are traded on will no longer be centralized. And in my opinion, that even goes the same for things like eBay and potentially even Amazon. I know that's a real stretch, um, but that's coming down the road potentially, where you have a decentralized network and not one entity is controlling all the transactions. That's a much faster, much more efficient, much safer environment to be playing on. So what I think you'll see happen is, more and more exchanges where things are traded will be decentralized and Binance is pushing heavily to be the lead dog there. Now, that said, when we have a decentralized exchange, obviously there's gonna be a currency of that exchange and that has been for now Bitcoin. Of course, there'll probably be some other cryptocurrency which will step up and potentially lead the way, but Bitcoin's got a strong foothold in anything to do with decentralized networks, decentralized infrastructure. It is a great um, commodity. So, and you notice I call it a commodity because I do believe it is because it's a limited resource, which is why I told you guys in that webinar, I think it's going to be going to 100,000 and much, much more than that in the long term. Um, you may hear things about you know China shutting down Bitcoin. Let's be clear, they are not shutting down Bitcoin, right? They're not going to shut it down. They might shut down, they might make it illegal to trade it in China, but they're still gonna be trading in other exchanges around the world wherever a computer is hooked up to the network that has the ledger. Um, Brendan says CD, CZ is the, the, the owner of Binance. Um, he said that CFI is dead and DeFi is the future. I agree. CFI is centralized finance, DeFi is decentralized finance. Um, and you know, It'll take some time for this to happen because to me it is a it's a colossal shift in the way that things are going to be done. But make no mistake about it, there will be cryptocurrencies on the backbone there, like Bitcoin. Now, another thing that was interesting, I think I showed you guys a year ago. I'm not even a year ago. There were some Bitcoin addresses that had never moved. Recently, one address, actually just yesterday or a couple days ago, that had over one billion dollars in Bitcoin. <laughs> you heard me right, one billion. Let me see if I can real quickly. Uh, let's just. I just want to bring this up just for fun, so you guys can see it and, and just let your jaws drop. Um, there was a website out there that used to have. Oh, what? Where is it? I hope it's here. All right, let me see if I can bring it. There it goes. So here is the top 10 richest Bitcoin addresses. This one right here, there are $2 billion worth of Bitcoin sitting here right now. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight Bitcoin addresses with over $1 billion in those accounts. If you could hack this, if it was easy to hack guys, that would be gone. These people would, people would steal this all the time. Ain't gonna happen. So there's a lot of money out there that's, that's technically safe. And one of these addresses moved the other day that hadn't moved since the very beginning of Bitcoin. They're thinking it might be the Silk Road, um, one of the Silk Road accounts. Now here's something interesting. You guys remember, I'm pretty hard on people that say that Bitcoin's used by drug dealers and nefarious acts. Everything is trackable with Bitcoin. Now here's the very interesting shift that's happening right now, is you're looking at chain to chain swaps, meaning, you could not before go and take Bitcoin and immediately just flip it over and get another cryptocurrency with it. You had to go through an exchange, trade it, and you know, buying and selling one, and, and there was that sort of transfer. Now you can do hot swaps, hot uh, off-chain hot swaps, where I can literally take something and flip it into a different currency. So while I was hard on people that were saying Bitcoin's used for drug, drugs and, and terrorists and stuff like that, if you go back a few years, that's absolutely true. If you're using them for those, you're stupid because everything's trackable. This $1 billion that moved out of that Bitcoin, um, that specific Bitcoin address and is now being split up, they say, into smaller accounts, they could hide that easily. And it goes back to something I saw here in the chat, which was 
things like Monero. So Monero uses a technology which is called ring signatures and it's very complex. I won't even get into it, but basically they can randomize the signatures so that they don't know where the money came from or where it went. So if I wanted to uh, wash money, so let's say I, you know, I got a whole bunch of Bitcoin, I, I don't know, I, let's say I hack one of these addresses and I take a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. I can run it into something like Monero or uh, Zcash or some of these other ones through hot swaps and make that money disappear. I can pull it out the other side of Monero, go back into Bitcoin and everything is honky dory and I'm fine and dandy. That's the weird part about crypto now is, is the technology is getting better and better so we can jump from currency to currency uh, and in the near future we'll probably see a much greater adaptation of that. So I just throw that one out there, I thought that was a rather interesting one uh, that I saw recently. So. That was my Bitcoin piece. Uh, I have to get to Tomasina's question here before the end. Uh, let's see, Tomasina, and there's her question right there. She says, I know today's show is regarding uh, Forex, but if time permits, I'd like your thoughts on Alibaba's future Ant IPO. All right, I will talk about Ant IPO. So for those who don't know, Ant is this financial juggernaut in China. It's absolutely massive. and. The IPO was supposed to go through, but the Chinese government just halted it on Tuesday. The reason being is they're saying that it hasn't met certain financial obligations and there's different things it hasn't uh, you know, complied with. For me, this is China going, this is too big. This is now basically taking over the Chinese banking system. Uh, I, one of the facts I read said in the last year, they've done $17 trillion worth of payments on their, their app, AntPay. You know, this is all of a sudden you're taking out, you know, the Bank of China. You're taking out centralized banking, which goes right into what we talked about. It's still centralized because it is um, Alibaba. But what's interesting there is it is now moving away from the normal banks and normal institutions, kind of going private. And my my assumption would be in the near future that's what will be the decentralized platform for uh, our our overall global markets. And even for people who didn't have credit cards. Uh, Ant Pay was the way for them to get money and send money around, and all of a sudden everybody's using it. So the IPO probably will be massive, right? It's going to be touted as one of the largest IPOs China has ever done. The question is, will it flourish? My assumption would be it's going to have a monstrous opening, right? It's going to have a really big gap up. I would wait and give it 30 days just to see how the dust settles there. My guess is it's not going to succeed like it did in China here. If I'm an American bank, I'm doing exactly what Alipay is trying to do right now uh, in AntPay, and I'm trying to do that here in the U.S. If there's continued trade tariffs and technology issues and copyright um, issues going on with China and our government, there's no way they would let AntPay come into the United States. They would block it. But you know, you can see something like PayPal. I saw that chat come in here. Uh, where was that one from? Um, yeah, in, in news says so. PayPal goes. Yeah, I could see PayPal doing something like that. Very interesting. It, it seems to me, as a consumer, the way to go. One app that I can pretty much do everything on. I can manage all my bank accounts. I can manage my investment accounts. I can send money all quick, seamless, um, much faster and easier. Right now, I've got. Gosh, I have like. How many do I have? One, two, three. I have four bank accounts. And I've included the Discover, the savings. So I have five straight bank accounts that if I want to transfer around, it's cumbersome. That's not including any of my, you know, almost dozen trading accounts and crypto accounts out there. There's tons of stuff. So be nice to have everything kind of centralized. Um, I think it'll be a great IPO when it happens, but I'd be, I, you know I me, mean? I would not touch the IPO. You don't have price history. You have hype pumping it up. Um, and that's what's going to drive that one up. Um, Yes, uh, Big Ebb says, I read that there were over a trillion dollars geared up for an anti-IPO now going into other tech. That's true. I, I, don't, think that the, I don't think that the IPO is, is done and over with. I think what happened is it's basically the Chinese government saying, okay, you're too big. We're not going to let this happen until we get a cut of the action. So what's in it for us? What are you giving me with regards to this IPO of Ant? Are we going to get a stake in the company? Does China get a 10% stake? You know, Chinese government probably do something like that. Once they get that, they'll let it IPO and then they control the information. And they're probably saying that right now is we want the information on the back end. So we want to know what all the people are doing with their accounts, with their money, because they're not really a democracy over there in China, are they? All right, um, let's see. Already have Venmo, PayPal, and Cash App. Yeah, Adam, we have Venmo, PayPal, and Cash App, but imagine Let's just take Venmo as an example because I use Venmo a lot. Let's say Venmo, you were now paid through Venmo. So your employer paid you through Venmo. 
Um, you could have your checking and savings account there on Venmo. So you had one account would earn you higher interest. You could also be investing directly from Venmo. So right on the Venmo app, if you made a transaction for let's say uh, $19.87, it would say, would you like that $13,000 to go to, into an investment account? Great, sure, why not? Let's take that 13 cents, change, throw it in an investment account. That's one of the apps they're doing. And, and um, AntPay did it as like a test and all of a sudden they had millions of people putting in just spare change and all of a sudden the money that they're investing is big it's moving markets so uh, you know that's the type of thing that we have all these different apps Acorn and Venmo and all these different pieces what AntPay did brilliantly is bring them all together into one app um, and I think we'll probably be there at some point too uh, and Patrick um, good it's good for long-term investment I don't know whether we're talking about the drug thing <laughs> yeah I have all kinds of trading accounts Patrick um, yeah, Oregon, by the way, did legalize oh, just about everything. I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, psilocybin, huh? Yeah, well, yeah, who knows? Oregon's going to be an interesting one if they legalize all that hard stuff. Some of that stuff probably should be banned, but we don't have to do go in-depth on drug show. So it's like if Robinhood turned into a bank as well. Yes, Adam, I think you're you're probably right. I think if, if Robinhood were to step it up and do a little bit more, um, with regards to their payments and get broader reach. You know, if you're a trader, they position themselves as a, a trading platform for free. What AntPay has done is saying, we're just basically a financial services company, period. So it's everything under the umbrella. And I think that that's where they did the right thing is they built this umbrella and saying, we can cover all this stuff. Let's build those pieces out. Whereas you have the umbrella here in the US of financial services and Robinhood said, we're gonna go the small little niche over here for traders who don't have money, who have very little money and don't want to pay commissions. They did very well there, um, but what might happen is if they do IPO, they'll take that capital and buy some other components and put them together in one app. And uh, that will probably, I don't know why it hasn't happened here, right? I don't see why it hasn't happened here yet. Brennan says, goodbye financial privacy. Yeah, I agree. I mean, let's be honest, is your is the privacy, is financial world private? No, it's pretty, pretty gross. Pretty, pretty ugly. All right, let me uh, show you what's happening for today. I, I did not see the Square numbers, but both Square and Roku were popping big time after hours. Roku actually gave back all its gains, but Square was showing very nice gains after hours. And I've been big on Square simply because they're allowing more crypto access. They're ones helping legitimize the entire crypto space. Remember, if you went four or five years ago, people were saying that crypto is an absolute scam. It's a fraud. Those people are getting quieter and quieter as it's starting to become more mainstream and accepted, and I think that's going to continue. So Square uh, did well today. Here's what's happening for tomorrow. I've got Canada and the U.S. boxed out here in red. 5.30 in the morning tomorrow. I think that that's right. Yeah, I think it's right. Um, you have 5.30 in the morning tomorrow, Canada with unemployment numbers. So for Brendan and his market, if he's trading the Canadian markets, you might see some action there. Unemployment rate expected to stay the same at 9%. And then for the U.S., we have the non-farm employment change. That will be a big number. And of course, uh, you guys heard Walker, the Texas trader, talk about that. We also have our unemployment rate coming out tomorrow, expecting it to drop a little bit from 7.9% to 7.7. Those are your big stories for tomorrow. Uh, again, if you want to know more about Walker Anglin, you can just go to his Facebook. That's going to be, I think I had it up here. Uh, there it is. The Texas Trader, Walker Texas Trader. Just uh, search for that one on Facebook. Add him as an invite if you want to join him for his uh, reveal of non-farm payrolls tomorrow morning. That should be an interesting one and maybe cause some nice ripples in the markets. Uh, that said, these markets have been doing really, really nice. Yeah, Simon says square up eight, eight, eight bucks. Yeah, I was actually looking at that one earlier. I'll bring them both up. I was going to try to wrap up the show, but you know what? Blame Simon. He made you drag it out even more. Let's go SQ. Here is the SQ. Uh, I'll bring up a five minute time frame and show you 24 hours. This is what it did during regular market hours. And here is your 24 hours. Now it's giving back some of it, right? It's still up 6.9%, but it was up a lot more. I mean, that's a pretty nice move. Check out Roku. Roku had a 25% pop. It jumped from 225 to 250. That's a 25% gain, all right? Yeah, it just seems crazy. Yeah, just 25% gain in five minutes and then fell 25% in five minutes. Uh, that's just popcorn trade of the day. All right, uh, let's see. Adam says, question, um, what do you think of the Dow and the Russell still not able to make new all-time highs? Lower lows and lower highs on the Dow. Any indication that weakness will come into the ES and NQ? No, I think what it, it's more a representation of money chasing performing assets. 
if you look at what's happened in the past, let's just say week, right? For the past week, money is flooding, pouring into one asset class. One. I mean, okay, it's pouring into everything, but where's the lion's share going? Semiconductors, technology, uh, you know, and your FANG stocks. Those are the ones that have really just been ripping the upside. And I can prove that to you by showing you my um, sector chart here. I have this from the 28th of October where they kind of bottomed out a little bit. And I know it looks kind of a weird chart. Let me see if I can zoom out. This is from the 20th of October. Um, this is one, two, three, four. It's like eight or nine different sectors, including semiconductors, uh, consumer staples, utilities, healthcare, energy, financials. Um, semiconductors, SMH up here, up 11.7% in since the 28th of October. That's a week. Uh, that's a monster move, 11.7%. All these other ones are doing great. S&P right here, uh, think that that's showing it up right around just over 7%. You know, even underperforming grossly is utilities only up 2.34%. So where is, why are they underperforming? Because where are most of the semiconductor companies? They're, most of those are going to be on the NASDAQ. So you're seeing the money pour into the NASDAQ, which is historically more technology based. So that that's um, to me why that's happening. <laughs> Big Ed says, don't bet against the, the NASDAQ. I actually, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm betting against it just on a small uh, January 15th put on the QQQ. You know, we came right up today on that daily chart and do a decent area of supply. Feel like we really got this crazy, unprecedented move in three days. Actually, I'm going to call it two days um, with two breakaway gaps. So I do have a January. So uh, actually some January puts on the NASDAQ 100 right now were opened up this afternoon. Um, yeah, I'm betting against it, which is really, really, really crazy. Uh, it's, it's dangerous to be doing that, but uh, I did have them out, the, out till January, so I gave myself a little bit, but certainly not loading the boat like I did on that S&P back in April. That was nuts. All right, um, my popcorn tray of the day singing, <laughs> Gretchen, not gonna do it. <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to do it for me for today. Tomorrow, I have a show all by my lonesome. That's right. I'm doing just me, myself, and I tomorrow. Um, if you guys have any specific thing you want me to cover, let me know. Um, I'm always open to talk about just about whatever topics. I'm actually looking at the Thanksgiving week. I will probably be gone. I'm guessing I'm not going to be doing shows that week, so I might actually build. I told you guys I was going to do a pattern show. In my mind, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to spend some time over the weekends and build out uh, a series of shows, probably three or five depending on how the week goes, and stage them to be released every day on Thanksgiving week to come out at 2 p.m. So it's like a normal video, just won't be live because I might be traveling around, um, but I might do that. Let me know if you guys would like that, if you're interested in that, and that might be kind of fun to do just kind of a, a five day, uh, five session series on patterns and how you trade them. I don't know. You guys have been asking about it, so I'm trying to figure things to hold down a show for a week while I'm going to be out of town. Anyway, that will do it for me, everybody. Again, if you like the show, give me a little thumbs up. If you, um, I know Thomas, you know, a whole week without me. It's all right. You'll survive. Uh, if you like the show, give me a thumbs up. Of course, you can always leave your comments down below the YouTube video. That actually helps me out as well from search performance. Uh, if you have it, if you want something covered tomorrow, or you want me to g give feedback on today's show, just do me a favor. Go down below the YouTube video, type it in there, and I will get to all that stuff on tomorrow's show. That